Well, good morning. Good morning. I tell you, you're all doing a lot warmer now than you were last night. Oh, good. I'm glad to see you all survived last night's power average and are here with us this morning. And with that, I just have a few announcements for us. Uh, Midweek services will be held on Wednesday at 12.15 and again at 7 o'clock. And there will also be meals provided starting at 6. And this week will be provided by the Tinkers. The Tinkers will provide a meal for this upcoming week at 6 o'clock. And services are going to be held at 12.15 in the afternoon and at 7 o'clock in the evening. Uh, also, there are Lenten devotionals to pick up. They are in the narthex. And they can be, they'll be handed out following services by the Lutheran uh, Layman's League. Uh, if you have not picked one up, please go ahead and grab one for this wonderful season of Lent. Uh, also, <clears throat> people have requested that instead of passing the plate, we will go back to using the offering box. So please put your offerings in the offering box in the back, and the elder will bring that up during our offering. With that being said, please fill out your attendance cards, pass those to the center aisle, and our elder will pick those up during the offering as he's coming forward. Uh, also, well, I have some very sad news. This is the last week of uh, that extra hour of sleep that you've all been enjoying for so long. Next Sunday, we'll be starting Daylight Savings. So please, set your clocks ahead and, be on, and set ahead to the time an hour ahead as we'll be moving into the different time change this coming Sunday. And with that, just a reminder that uh, we do not have all the announcements on the screen. Please pick up a bulletin and look in there as they will have the rest of the announcements and the extra details needed to let you know what's going on. But with that, let us begin with our opening song, Oceans. Oh 
Please rise. We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. When you call to me, I will answer you, says the Lord. With long life, the Lord will satisfy you. confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. I confess to God Almighty before the whole company of heaven and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed by my fault, by my own fault, by my own most grievous fault. Wherefore I pray, God Almighty, to have mercy on me, forgive me all my sins, Almighty God, in his mercy, has given you his son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. May the Lord who has begun this good work in us bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. <clears throat> o Lord God, you led your ancient people through the wilderness and brought them to the promised land. Guide your people in the present day that all who call upon your name may find you to be their refuge and fortress forever. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Old Testament reading today comes from Deuteronomy 26, beginning in verse 1. When you come into the land that the Lord your God has given you for inheritance, and have taken possession of it and live in it, you shall take some of the fruit, first of the fruits of the ground, which you harvest from your land that the Lord your God has given you, and you shall put it in a basket, and you shall go to the place that the Lord your God will choose to make his name to dwell there. And you shall go to the priest who is in office at that time and say to him, I declare today to the Lord your God that I have come to the land the Lord swore to our fathers to give us. Then the priest shall take the basket from your hand and set it down before the altar of the Lord your God. And you shall make response before the Lord your God. A wandering armament was my father. And he went down into Egypt and sojourned there, few in number, and there he became a great nation, great, mighty, and populous. And the Egyptians treated us harshly, and humiliated us, and laid on us hard labor. Then we cried to the Lord, the God of our fathers. And the Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. And the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with great deeds of terror, with signs and wonders. And he brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And behold, now I bring the first of the fruits of the ground which you, O Lord, have given me. And you shall set it down before the Lord your God and worship before the Lord your God. And you shall rejoice in all the good that the Lord your God has given to you and to your house, you and the Levite and the sojourner who is among you. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle reading today comes from Romans, chapter 10, beginning at verse 8. <clears throat> but what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart, that is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God had raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For the scriptures say, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Praise be to God. 
For it has been delivered to me, and I give to whom I will. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. And Jesus answered him, It is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. And he took him to Jerusalem, and set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, to guard you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered him, It is said, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. And when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. Let us come together and confess our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the The third day he rose to the hand of the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. You may be seated. At this time, we invite the children to come forward to hear the children's message. <laughs> Bible teaches us we really need to remember. 
God gives us in the Bible his law. That's the Ten Commandments. It tells us what we are to do and what we are not to do. And the most important thing about God's law is when we look at our lives in light of God's law, we come to one conclusion, that is, we've all broken God's law, which means that we're all what? Sinners. That's exactly right. That's the tough part. But the Bible also tells us good news. What's the good news? That's right. That Jesus died on the cross to take away our sins and bring us the gift of life forever in Him. That's the good news. And the Bible says about itself, it says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Bible's kind of like a map, showing us the way, showing us God's will, and most of all, showing us what God has done for us. And that's what this holy season of Lent is all about. Notice we've got purple everywhere. It reminds us that we see purple during the season of Lent. And it reminds us that, first of all, we need to remember that we're all sinners, that we've all fallen short of the glory of God. But most of all, we remember this is why Jesus came to this world, to suffer and to die, so that by faith and trust in him, we'd have forgiveness of life forever. God guides us and directs us to this wonderful truth in his word, the Bible. Okay? That's about right, it's a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you on this first Sunday of the Lent season, uh, remembering that Without you, we would be lost in this world. But you've given us your word, the Holy Bible, a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. And that through your word, uh, you show us what we are to do and what we are not to do and how you would have us live. But most of all, we learn that again, that we're all sinners. But the greatest uh, gift that you've given us is the gift of your Son, our Lord Jesus, who came to this world to suffer and to die and to rise again so that by faith and trust in him we have forgiveness life eternal. Thank you, Jesus, for showing us the way. Thank you for your sacrificial love and help us to show that love to others. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Okay, thanks for coming on. Thank you.
Good morning, and may God be with us and bless us as we gather in his house this uh, cool morning, having survived a rather frigid night. Only in Nebraska is one week we go from 70 degrees to below zero. But God's love warms our hearts, and it's good to be together in God's house this Lord's Day. Our text is uh, our gospel lesson from Luke chapter 4, the familiar account of our Lord being tempted by the devil in the wilderness. You may be seen. Perhaps by now, maybe, maybe not, you've noticed that every year for the first Sunday in the Lenten season, the gospel reading is the account of our Lord Jesus being tempted by the devil in the wilderness. But each year it is taken from a different gospel. This year it's from Luke's gospel. Last year it was from Mark's gospel. Next year it will be from Matthew's gospel. In the opening words of our text from St. Luke's Gospel, we read these words. And Jesus, full of the Spirit, returned from the Jordan. Now, that phrase, return from the Jordan, reminds us that the temptation happened immediately after our Lord's baptism by John in the Jordan River. When Jesus was baptized, the Holy Spirit descended as a dove. And the voice of the Father said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Now our Lord's baptism signaled the very beginning of his public ministry, a three-year ministry. A ministry that would lead him to Calvary's cross, where he would suffer and die as an atoning sacrifice for your sin, for my sin, and for the sin of the entire world. And the familiar words of John 3.16, our Lord Jesus himself said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And it was not long after our Lord's baptism that the Holy Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness, where we're told he was to be tempted by the devil. And for 40 days and 40 nights, imagine this, folks, 40 days and 40 nights, Jesus did not eat anything. Now, what's your first response to that? Now, thinking about it again, 40 days and 40 nights. Some would question whether or not you could actually, or anyone could actually live that long without eating food. I thought, well, man, I'll research that a little bit. So I Googled it. Well, the fact of the matter is, is yes, you can live for 40 days and 40 nights without food. The key is, you have to stay hydrated. As long as Jesus drank water, he could survive that long. There have been other people that have gone that long without food, but you can only go a very short time, by the way, without water before your body and your system would finally shut down. Needless to say, after 40 days and 40 nights, Jesus would have been very, very weak, and he would have been very, very hungry. Now, Jesus being both true God and true man, one would think that he would have food handy, that this would not be the problem for the Lord. But the thing we need to remember is this was during the period which we refer to in theology as the years of our Lord's humiliation, which doesn't mean in this context to make fun of, like we think to be humiliated, but during the years of our Lord's humiliation, he did not fully use the powers that were his as the Son of God. He experienced life as you and I experienced. He had a human nature and a godly nature. Now, 40 days without food would be as difficult for the Lord as it would be for any one of us. And it was also after those 40 days, when Jesus was very weak, that the devil came and tried to tempt our Lord, tried to, tried to lead our Lord to sin. And the first temptation our Lord faced from the devil was very subtle. The devil came to Jesus and said this, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become bread. 
Now, some might wonder again, well, what's the big deal about converting stone into bread? After all, the Gospels record at least two instances where Jesus uh, multiplied food to feed thousands and thousands of people. Why would it have been wrong for Jesus to perform a miracle to nourish his own body? But the point of this temptation in trying to get Jesus to uh, perform this miracle, to satisfy his own hunger, again, is very subtle. Because what the devil was really trying to do was to get Jesus to try to doubt God's promises. Or get him to believe that God had forgotten him, that God wanted him to starve to death in the wilderness. Take matters into your own hands. God has abandoned you. The devil hoped that thoughts like that would have entered our Lord's mind when he said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. And of course we know, how did Jesus fight back? How did Jesus resist and defeat this temptation? That Jesus used the very same weapon that we have available to us, that of course being the Word of God. Jesus said, it is written, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Now let's consider the second temptation that Luke recorded. We are told that the devil took him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and said to him, To you I will give all the authority and their glory, for it has been given to me. If you then would worship me, it will all be yours. Here Jesus is trying to convince our, or excuse me, here the devil is trying to convince our Lord that the world and everything in it belong to him. Why? Because as we know, the world is a very sinful place. Going clear back to our first parents, Adam and Eve, when they brought sin into this world. Furthermore, the devil claimed that the world was his to give away. And again, the lie here should be obvious. Because again, when we look at Scripture, specifically Psalm 24, what do we find? We find these words of affirmation. That the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. And we dare not forget that fact. And yet again, we see resisting, uh, Jesus resisting temptation using God's word. In fact, he quotes this time, Deuteronomy 6. 13, you shall worship the Lord and serve him only. Now these familiar words of scripture are a wonderful reminder to us all. Our faithful worship of God is important and it must remain a priority in our lives. And I'm not just talking about on Sunday morning or on Monday evening. Worship is the way we are to live our lives each and every day as Christians. All our lives are to be worshipped. We have that opportunity in the morning to begin our day with prayer at the close of the day when we go to bed or before meals. We have opportunity throughout the day, as busy as our lives are, to spend a little time to let God speak to us in his holy word. And each of us should strive to take advantage of that opportunity because that is how God speaks to us. And again, our greatest privilege, of course, is to turn to the Lord in prayer at any time and any place, knowing that he promises to hear us and to answer us according to his will. Now think about it. Think about it. What would our world be like if more and more people committed their lives to worship? What would our world be like if more and more people committed their lives to service to God? and service to others. I think we would all agree our world would be a much better place. Now, in the final temptation, we are told that the devil took Jesus to Jerusalem and set him on the pinnacle of the temple. And he said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to guard you, they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. Now here the devil did something very subtle. 
Seemingly, he quoted scripture. He quoted scripture to the very Son of God. But Jesus knew right away that what the devil did here was something very sly. He quoted scripture, but he did not quote scripture accurately. He left words out to twist God's word to fit his own agenda, his own temp his temptation of the Lord. And sad to say, that's the same thing we find in today's world. We find people taking God's word and taking the clear teachings of scripture way out of context to teach something that God's word, in fact, does not teach. And we need to be careful about that because just as subtle as uh, the devil's temptation was to our Lord in the same way, that subtlety can sometimes lead people into false belief and false teaching. Now here, the other lesson is, important, is also important for us to remember that God's promise of protection the fact that he is with us and watches over us should not lead us into a false sense of security where we take foolish chances. A more modern way of putting this is play stupid games, win stupid prizes. And how many examples of that do we see in our world today? People do foolish things and the result is even more foolishness and too often people end up getting hurt or even worse. God's word warns us, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. And that brings home the idea that when we sin, when we turn our backs on God's word and live contrary to God's word, there is always going to be a price to pay <laughs> sooner or later. And sadly, we all have to confess that there are times when we do not listen to God's word as we should. Too often we let the devil, the world, and our own sinful nature lead us away from God and his promises. Yes, we can fall into the devil's lies, but our Lord Jesus never did, and he never did once. The Lord Jesus kept the law perfect so he could be the perfect sacrifice in our place. So he could be the one who would atone for our sins on Calvary's cross and bring us the promise of life in him now and forever. Our Lord reinforces three important points in the scriptures that he quotes in our text today. Jesus, first of all, impresses this upon us this Lord's day. Man shall not live or by bread alone. We need to remember, we need to care for ourselves, we need to eat right, we need to eat nutritional food, but that's not all there is. We also need to make sure that we are fed spiritually, that we, we're studying God's word, that we're growing in faith, that we look to God's word as a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Secondly, Jesus says this, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Again, Lent is a time for us to remember and to be reminded of our worship life, our time together in God's house, but also our worship life every day, whether that be in prayer and studying God's word or hopefully both. And finally, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. In these words, our Lord Jesus reinforces the idea that we should not lead our lives recklessly or aimlessly but according to the teachings that God has given us, that God's word and God's word alone is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. With this weapon, God's word, Jesus stopped the temptation of the devil. He resisted temptation so that he could do what he came to this world to do, to give his life so that we would have life in, in him both now and forever. Thanks be to God when we fall into sin, that we can remember that our Lord Jesus was tempted in every way, yet without sin. That he went to Calvary's cross. He suffered there. He died. He rose again on the third day to bring to you and to me the assurance of forgiveness and the promise of life forever in him. 
May the Lord bless us and guide us and strengthen us in our daily battle against sin and temptation in our lives, knowing that by faith in Christ, we have already won the victory. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please rise. We bow our heads in prayer. Dear as Lord Jesus, we are reminded again this morning how you were tempted in the wilderness by the devil himself. And how, Lord, you used an incredible weapon which we have every day, that being God's precious word and his promises. Lord, you overcame all temptation so that you could be the perfect sacrifice for us all. Help us by the power of your Holy Spirit so that we may fight temptation in our lives. That we may live truly live lives of worship and service to you and to one another. For all the blessings that you have provided us, we thank and praise you. And we ask your guidance each and every day. In your strong name we pray. Amen. Please be seated.
Let us come together and pray for all the people of God. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this wonderful day, for this time to be gathered, spent once amongst another in fellowship and in worship, to hear your word read and proclaimed. Lord, help us understand the amazing gift that we have in your Son, who knows what it is that we go through, and understands what it is that we face. For he himself has faced temptation as well. But unlike, but unlike us, Lord, he has not fallen into sin. <coughs> Let us treasure that wonderful gift, who is our Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Lord, be with those who are currently in the hospital. For Danny Anderson, Delane Hunter, and Brian Hoffman, who will also be undergoing knee surgery on March 8th. Lord, be with these folks and help the doctors to be diligent in their work and make sure they'll be able to return home soon. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we continue to pray for those who are battling or recover from past illnesses. We pray for Monty Zerke, Byron Reed, Sandy Buckendall, Shauna Gossman, Anna Heron, Ted Weinrich, Shane Dozy, Jolene Buss, Gretchen Shrinkline, Sherry Stanachek, <coughs> Dave Meinke. Lord, be with these folks and grant them healing and recovery so that they may continue about their days, ever praising you. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Lord, we give you thanks for the wonderful, wonderful celebration of the 50th anniversary of marriage for Jean and Jolene Buss. What a wonderful gift it is to see that two are still married and are enjoying a wonderful, fruitful marriage. Lord, in your, mer in your mercy. Yeah. Lord, we give you thanks for the wonderful work that's being done in your name, especially this day as we pray for Reverend Ted Cree and his wife, Rebecca, and along with their five children who are serving you in your church over in the Dominican Republic. And we pray that Pastor Cree serves as the head of the LCMS in Latin America. And we pray that you'll continue to bless the growth of the LCMS in this region and continue for the planting of more churches in Latin America. And that you will guide many more young men and women to serve as pastors and teachers in the LCMS throughout Latin America. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Lord, we give you thanks the wonderful servants of our community. We give you thanks to our first responders, our firefighters, our police, and our military. Lord, keep them safe in their work and grant them courage to continue about their business and to serve faithfully and diligently. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we give you thanks for the wonderful, much needed moisture that we received yesterday and last night. Lord, we thank you that we are still full health and enjoying the wonderful time here today and gather amongst one another. Lord, help us to always enjoy these wonderful gifts. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Please rise as we pray in which the Lord himself has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come.
praise